Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and WWDC 2024 is just one day away. The Worldwide Developer Conference launches this time every year to show us the next version of software that's coming out to the public later this year, but we'll be able to try it out as developers and public beta testers. So I thought we'd talk about some last minute leaks and rumors as what to expect with iOS 18 and more. Now the first thing is when and where to watch it. You can watch this live and if we go to apple.com you'll see it right here. It's the first thing that pops up right now. And it says watch tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time or 1 p.m. Eastern time. It changes depending on where you live in the world, but it typically is that same exact time for everyone. And you can watch it on apple.com, Apple TV, typically iPhone, iPad, Mac, or vision pro. You can also watch it on YouTube. If you go to their channel at Apple's YouTube channel, you'll watch it there live streamed. I'll also be live tweeting it. So if you can't actually watch it on either of those places. I'll be tweeting it live on X or Twitter and just give you all that information. Now, Apple is always saying this is going to be epic or a big deal, and it looks like it's going to be one of the biggest years as far as iOS software updates. Now, they did already release a WWDC 24 music playlist, so if you go to Apple, go to Browse, you may see it right away, but you can search for it as well, and I'll link it in the description so it's not showing right away, but if you just go to WWDC and you want to see all of the different playlist things here, it says WWDC 24, hello, and this is all of the different music, probably with the event, and you can see it here. So that's available now if you want to take a listen to that. Now, again, like I said, this is supposedly going to be the biggest iOS update in years. iOS 18 is expected to get the largest update and Apple's planning to make just about every app on iOS a little bit different. They may be redesigning some apps, other apps will get some changes, but Photos is said to get most of a redesign. Things such as health and fitness are said to get redesigned. So if you're using those apps, we should see some major changes with that. We're also expecting Siri to get some major updates with large language models and AI integration to help it be more useful. Right now, Siri works some of the time. Sometimes it works fine for things like setting alarms, but other times it's just not that intelligent anymore. It looks like they're going to really revamp this, make it much better. And then of course we've heard AI where they're going to call it Apple intelligence and sort of integrate it throughout the OS to be more on device and just be more helpful instead of just being sort of a chat bot that you can talk back and forth to. Now, the latest information is actually saying that the icons will get an update for dark mode. So if you go into dark mode, turn it on, not only will it change things such as settings, but apparently this time around, it looks like it's going to change the icons themselves. Maybe give them more of a dark look or have a dark tint to them instead of being a lighter mode. So that's just maybe a different look overall. That'll be nice. We don't know if they're going to change the icons themselves with maybe new logos, but at least they'll have some sort of refresh when you're in dark mode. Of course, you may have already heard, we'll be able to move different icons around instead of just being in a grid and sort of walking to where they are, we'll be able to put them anywhere we want. And also typically we'll be able to group them, not just into folders, but something where we could maybe tint them into a color representing what it is. So phone calls and maybe messages we could put in a group and then maybe change it to the color red or orange or whatever we want. So it looks like we'll have much more customization there. I've also talked about already how they'll have some customization with the control center. We should be able to move around what we have here. We don't expect a major redesign with it, but we do expect some new icons for music and in the home app. And we also apparently will be able to have multiple pages with this. So if you want to have one page, that's maybe for your Wi-Fi and cellular and Bluetooth, then you could have different connections there. The next page could be music. The page after that could be home or however you want to customize it. It looks like that's something Apple is going to be including. So that'll be great to have some sort of redo there. I would love a full redesign, maybe with some more depth, but we'll have to wait and see if they're doing that or just giving us more customization in general. There'll also be a new password app. Right now we have to go into settings, go down into our passwords to see our passwords. And while that's helpful, it would be much better to have a dedicated app, whether that's something that's similar to one password or LastPass. I typically use those different password managers like one password, and it's just much easier to go in, see your passwords, see different information. This will be great to have on iOS and all the other devices as well. Now, many of us have wanted notifications updates. And while we don't know if there's going to be a full redesign here, we do know that there's going to be some new options for summarization. So hopefully we get something that helps organize these a little bit better as it just seems to be a ton of information, not organized very well. It would be great for them to give us some customization as far as what we're seeing. We do have some things with summary, but it looks like we're going to get 
much better updates for this. So I can't wait to see what that is. And probably one of the most asked about features in previous years, looks like it's finally coming to iOS 18 with the ability to lock apps with face ID or touch ID or a passcode. So maybe you don't want someone going into anything from music to podcasts, to messages, to photos, instead of just using your device with face ID and relying on that, you'll be able to lock those behind face ID directly in an app. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to use different passwords for apps, but that would be great as well. So being able to lock apps looks like it's going to be a thing instead of having to use something like screen time like we do now. Now, it looks like we're also getting some updates with messages. I've talked about some of them, but there's a couple more to talk about. And within messages, not only are we hopefully getting some sort of new keyboard, I know a lot of people would love to see a number row across the top. There's no information about that, but either way, it looks like we're going to get some new updates for replies and you'll be able to reply with any emoji you want. So not just a few emoji, but any emoji, and you'll be able to use those as your sort of emoji reactions. You can't currently do that. And the other thing I know a lot of people want, it looks like we're going to get, is the ability to schedule when you're actually sending a message. So these are all updates a lot of people have wanted for a long time. We're also going to get some old school wallpaper packs. I talked about this the other day, but that's something I'm looking forward to. So if we go into our wallpaper, go ahead and add, and if we scroll down, we could get new collection categories where we'll have old school wallpapers with phrases, maybe such as think different or just different things they've done throughout the year. I would also love to see them bring back some live wallpaper, basically every version of iOS, just list it out. iOS one or iPhone OS one all the way up to the latest version with just different wallpaper packs there. I know tons of people would appreciate that. So that's what we're expecting as far as what's new with iOS 18 plus many other things I've gone over and the other things Apple has officially announced as well. So there's a lot to expect here with iOS 18, not technically a full redesign, but rather just a redo of everything. So I can't wait to see what they have with that. We're also going to get a calculator app finally for the iPad. Now, I personally have never really needed this as there's other apps that do this, but it will be more consistent. Apparently we'll be able to use the calculator on the iPad. I don't expect it to get much of a change, but at least it will be there. As far as any specific iPad OS changes, we haven't really heard a whole lot. Of course, we'll get everything from iOS 18 as Apple typically carries that across their different OSs, but we don't really expect a whole lot of specific things for the iPad, but maybe there'll be some surprises. So I'm hoping they do something with that. I would love to see files redone into Finder. That would really change the way you can use the iPad. Mac OS 15 is also said to get the same sort of updates with settings changes and much more. And Xcode itself is said to be getting AI integration to help you auto complete code. If you need to, I know that will be super helpful for developers. And those of you that are developers with the developer app, all of those different sessions about developer information will be here tomorrow as well. So again, it tells you when you can watch it and you'll be able to learn more about what's being integrated specifically into those versions and how you can actually update it using Xcode. When it comes to tvOS 18, we're not hearing a whole lot, but I would expect Siri to carry across tvOS 18, HomePod OS 18, and even Vision OS 2. So it looks like a lot of those same changes are just going to carry across everything with Vision OS 2 just being sort of a catch up release where it brings things like environments that were already missing. It's a little odd that Apple never included those to begin with. When it comes to watch OS 11, we're not really expecting a whole lot, basically some Siri upgrades, and then maybe some slight app redesigns to go along with what iOS 18 has to offer. But we're not really expecting a whole lot when it comes to watch OS 11 at all. When it comes to hardware announcements, well, don't expect anything. It seems this time around. Typically every year we'll get at least some sort of hardware announcement. And I was really hoping for a Mac studio update just with a new processor and maybe some updates across Mac mini and things like that and Mac pro, but it looks like we may be seeing that later on with M4 chipsets instead of an M3 upgrade. So maybe we'll get nothing. Maybe they'll just update it and not talk about it. We don't really know, but don't expect anything major. Some initial reports said that we were getting an Apple TV update, but it looks like that may not be the case, but either way, if there's an update, of course, I'll let you know. Now, iOS 18 betas, if you're wondering when you'll be able to try those out, well, if you're a beta tester or developer, well, if you're a developer, typically right after the event, usually within a half hour or so, Apple will release the beta updates. Now they're only available for developers at first, and then the public betas usually come out around the time of beta two. 
Typically that gives people enough time to test it, see what issues there are and decide whether or not you should install it. But if you want to sign up as a public beta tester, you can go to Apple's website of just beta.apple.com. So if you go to beta.apple.com, you can sign up for this. And then once you're signed up, of course, they'll update this with iOS 18. But once you're signed up, then all you'll do is go into your settings, go to general and then software update. And under here, you'll get another option and you'll be able to change this to public beta. Now, if you're a developer, you can sign up for that. But again, developer beta is released earlier to make sure there's no additional issues for it. Of course, right after the keynote and after they release the betas and everything else, Apple will typically have more conferences for different developers that are there, such as the state of the union and other things for the next few days. So all of those different schedules and when those are supposed to release are typically on the developer app that you you can see here. So this will be updated with all of the information with the schedule and much more. So if you want to see that after the keynote, you'll be able to do that. So lots of things to expect, lots of changes to expect for iOS 18. And it's seeming like it's going to be much bigger than many people expected. It should be pretty great. Let me know what you're most excited for in the comments below. No mention of split view yet, but maybe we'll get that and nobody's just seen it, but hopefully we'll get something along those lines as I know many people want that as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.